All right, guys, this is me coming to you from the future of this video to let you know that if you didn't watch my previous video on the mongoose about how I messed up, um, I fixed my mess up and these all still need to be pulled. These are on fresh, uh, never fire formed brass. This is fire formed brass. I went ahead and did <clears throat> loaded up the fire formed brass and I went out and shot it. So I will show all this at the end of the video, but I just wanted to let you know that the load, the loading that you see is not the loading of the brass that I shot, but it'll still apply. All right, guys, welcome back. Here's what we got on the bench today. So I have recently ran out of my um, 85 grain hollow point boat tail game kings sierras um so for my uh, six millimeter mongoose this little guy right here so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to work up a new load the only bullets available right now that i could find are these so that's what we're gonna work with got 200 of them we're gonna work up a load and um find out what shoots the best and we get to shooting hopefully we can uh get some coyotes with this thing this season so all right let's get started all right so i got some starline brass here uh it's been converted to six millimeter mongoose be sure to go check out my video on how to do that uh it's a great way this is uh fresh not fire formed i got uh, cci 400 primers in there about to run out of these might have to switch over to the number 41s before long but uh the there i definitely have enough to uh make up a load and load a few with it so that's what we're going to work on here all right guys here's what we're going to do we're using h48 or sorry imr4895 Here's our test sheet. Um, I don't know if we're gonna make it much past 25.6. The only reason why I say this is because that's the loading that I run with the Lake City Brass. And the Lake City Brass has a uh, quite a bit more capacity than what the Starline does. So we might not get much past that because we'll run out of uh, case capacity. Now, after it's fire formed, we'll have plenty of case capacity. But as of now, not going to have very much. Um, this is arguably, I would say, uh, the best option to a 223. Um, before I get started on that, uh, we're going to be hand throwing all these charges. All right. So let's get started here. Back to what I was saying about the 223. Um, this, I would say, is actually a um, better option than the uh, 223 if you're not going to be shooting below a 55 grain bullet. Uh, this is just my take on it, obviously. But. I mean, from what I've seen out of this thing, it's all around a uh, a great shooter and a great cartridge because you get more benefit out of it running a, a bigger diameter bullet. You can go a lot heavier bullets if you wanted to. Um, but, you know, I've, I've had this for over two and a half years now so i figured i'd finally uh show a video on doing some load development and uh my thoughts on the cartridge and uh to me i think it's just about the best alternative to a 223 now in saying that i am trying to get my hands on a 223 barrel that we can um use to uh just test between the two um i think 
about the only bullet weights that I can get that are in common are probably the 55 grain and maybe a 70 grain. It's kind of hard to find the exact same bullet with the exact same weight for both, but uh, I think I've made, I, I definitely found one with the 55 grain, so that would definitely be one to, to test out just to see which one would be be better. So. I'll definitely spare you guys the boring part of this and uh, I'll probably catch you over while I'm loading as uh, I will show you this as you can see right now we are only at 25.2 and our case is extremely full so uh, I may have to drop the charge some we're gonna see um, my uh, 85 grain is cruising with powder charge of 25.6, so I was hoping we could at least get to that one, but we may not. We might have to back our charges down some. So I'll let you guys know. All right, guys, what we got here, trusty old split neck case we're going to try to find our overall length here here's the gun Let's see if I can pop this thing apart All right, move her on over here to the uh, gun vise. Uh, here we are. I'm gonna. I'm thinking we're probably not even gonna come close to the lands on this one, but uh, we need to check anyway. So get my neck tension set up here correctly see if I can do this without dropping anything like that <laughs> and just spit this thing out I don't even know if this is the right measurement. We'll measure it anyway. 2.247. Get her stuck in here again. And the idea behind this wildcat was the fact that instead of doing a six by 45, uh, the neck's a little shorter on it to help accommodate the uh, longer bullets. So the case overall length is shorter to help accommodate the longer six millimeter bullets. This helps in hunting scenarios, in uh, match scenarios, because you know, higher grain bullets are gonna be longer and, uh, and in order to fit them in magazine, that's going to be your whole issue here is magazine length. You got to run shorter overall lengths. Well, 
You reduce the case, uh, case length down a little bit. That helps the bullet hang out there a little bit further. And in turn, the uh, walls of the case are actually straight. The, uh, they get blown out. They're straight instead of tapered like a 223. So the 6x45 is just basically a 223 that's necked up to a 6mm bullet. This, on the other hand, is got, it's pretty much, I guess you would say, a 6x45 AI. I'm sure I have not looked at the uh, Reamer specs, but I'm pretty sure that it's, there's other things that are different about it. But, Let's see if I can get it here again. Yep, 2.246, 2.247 seems about be about where the lands are hitting this puppy at. So we're going to back 8 thousandths off of that. We'll run her right around um, 2.38. So let's get this dude pushed in there a little bit further. See where that's at. Just about right there is where it's going to sit. Let's grab another one. We'll see how far the uh, case is sitting down. Or the bullet's sitting down in the case. So we're going to be right about. at that uh, shoulder body junction is what it looks like. So let's go ahead and get some of these dudes loaded up. All right, so I think we ran into our next issue here. Um, right there is the powder. I vibrated this down with my uh, electric toothbrush here. I got a video on that also, make sure to check that out. Um, but this, is not good i do not want to compress a load that much because there it it needs to be all the way down here at the uh, neck shoulder junction so sorry not neck shoulder shoulder body so i think we're gonna have to drop our charge weight we might have to go all the way down to 25 grains so i mean we are working with um non fire form brass and i know that actually makes a decent amount of difference with these so that'll probably that may be an issue that we're gonna have to deal with um you know after we got fire form brass working up a new load or just seeing how how much the case capacity changes i have not measured the case capacity on these to see how much it differs between fire formed and non fire formed so we might have to do that so we're going to adjust our charge weights here and uh, keep on trucking. All right, so this is what the new charges look like, uh, 23.2 to 24. After doing a little uh, review on how much powder is going to look like it's going to be fitting in the case and be right at a 100% case fill, um, as a you know 100% case fill as opposed you know to do with the load length of the bullet you know how much bullets sitting down inside the case you know up to the bottom of the bullet looks like 23 2 to 24 is going to be that range uh, 24 is going to be compressed so uh, we'll see how bad compressed it is it shouldn't be too bad but we're gonna start loading them hopefully we can get it right this time I'll show you guys how much uh, powder is actually in there. You guys can get an idea. We'll start off with uh, 
23.2. No, way over. the bat this is where we're at it's right at the bottom of the uh, of the neck right here so I'll still vibrate it I want to get it all you know packed in there uniformly and get it down that way it's get some consistency out of it let's go ahead and Put one of these dudes in here. That's what we're going to go with right there. All right. I'm going to go ahead and hold the rest of these charges up, and uh, I'll see you guys over at the press. All right, we got them loaded up here. Um, probably gonna vibrate these as I put them in the uh, press. Gonna back off our measurement some. Make sure we get it right on the money. It's come down four thousandths. Yep, would have been too deep. Well, we'll do the next one first before we do that one again. right there awesome put this guy back through I'm seated should be able to cruise right along here I didn't realize how much difference in uh, case capacity there was actually gonna be um, I guess maybe when I did my uh, initial load development with the 85 grain bullets I uh, must have been reusing the same cases over and over again, so I didn't notice the, after the cases were fire formed, I didn't notice the powder taking up that much room in there, but uh, the 85 grain load, it's running 25.6 uh, grains, same powder, at 2.2 overall length. 2.215 I should say and uh, so it's in there further than what this one is and I'm really surprised so took me by surprise that's why we had to rework uh, our load in which what we were gonna put in the case regardless we'll get her done Hopefully we don't blow anything up. I really doubt we will because we're pretty far under what the charge was for uh, the 85 grain bullet. And this is 20 grains less, so pretty sure we'll be all right. I'm just hoping our velocity picks up. So I was really hoping to be right around 3,000 feet per second, but I really don't think that that's going to happen with how short this thing's got to be in there, so. <coughs> Excuse me.
All right, guys, this is where we're at. Here is all of my data from the when I shot, of course, in typical fashion for me. Uh, did not have the chrono, uh, the magno speed set up correctly, so missed the first shot, of course. Uh, probably would be a good idea if I loaded some extras for uh, fouling rounds and whatnot just to get all my gear dialed in before I start, you know, taking data and everything so that'd be smart on my part but uh can always improve i shot the original numbers that i had made up for uh charges for the non-fire form brass which are fairly drastically different than what fire form brass is i need to measure what the difference in case capacity for these two are because it's pretty significant my <clears throat> compressed load for the non-far form brass was 24.1 and it only yielded me 2690 uh, with um, 24.1 grains of IMR 4895 with a 65 grain bullet there's the back of the case the case head it had i mean these are cci 400 primers there it's not cratering i mean there's no there's no pressure there and we're only at 2690 i'm pushing an 85 grain bullet out of this thing at 2800 so i was hoping to see right around 3000 feet per second but it wasn't going to happen out of the fireform brass so we might be closer to that with the non-fire form brass as the load will be more compressed. But So in other words, we're going to have to up our charge for fire form brass. I'm not going to be able to load this thing out of non-fire form brass. It's just not going to work. Um, but <clears throat> So we're going to have another video on finding the case capacity uh, difference between the two the fire formed and non fire formed and we're going to get our velocity up there we're i'm probably going to jump maybe a whole grain if not a grain and a half to get our velocity where it needs to be so stay tuned thank you guys for watching